Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Andy's Automotive here. Uh, we're back with the 2021.5 Volkswagen Atlas. Um, after a little more uh, research and you know comments on the forums after I posted the other video, um, supposedly there's a zip tie, literally a zip tie that's missing here uh, per Phil on Facebook on the Volkswagen Atlas forum. So what we're gonna do so I'm going to show you now with the camera right up in it, so forgive all the movement. Uh, it's just me holding this, so I'm going to try to do this as uh, best as possible. So here is your door collector. Let me zoom out so you can see what's actually going on here. So that's where the harness goes into the door. That's where it comes into the car. Okay. Now, just to clarify what I was saying the other day, hopefully my uh, car is unlocked so I can show you the other model harness on my 2015 Volkswagen Passat. Yes, it is unlocked. And look at that. Similar design, as I mentioned, but this is solid rubber, okay? There is nothing plastic moving in here. This is well designed. Eventually, this rubber would probably rot, but I mean, it's 2022 now, and I had to, I bought this car brand new 2015. Uh, with no miles on it so this is this is the better design in my opinion um now i do like the convenience factor of pulling off the uh the uh connector with just popping it up so i mean that's it's convenient but at the same time i don't i don't really like it to be honest with you because uh, if you saw the first video this was very very wobbly uh, we'll go to the passenger side. I did not put anything on the passenger side. All I did was put it on the driver's side because that's the door harness that's supposedly having the issues as a whole. So here is an untouched harness. Let me get a good spot. So it's not as uh, solid as the other one. It's got a lot of movement there. If you can stop moving the camera. This is, this is a very light, light pressure. See all that movement? All right, well, the one on the other car has none of that. All right, you can see this here. Wobbly, 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 right? So this is a very, very poor design in my opinion. Um, just so you're clear, the top here has a, uh, a risen part to kind of lock in place and then it snaps in the bottom. Um, so in the event that you need to, uh, to pull this out, you come from the bottom first and then pull it slightly down and that's the same thing for the driver's side so back over there we go again this is a 2021 and a half 2.0 four motion all right let's get back to it here let's see so again uh, i prefer to use plastic clips on this i mean plastic scrapers or something it's a very convenient design and as you see, it kind of just backs off the connector here. It's kind of what you see on some uh, Chrysler products and things like that. Um, but that's, that's as easy as it comes off right there. Boom. And now to be clear, let me zoom out. You can see where I have applied the dielectric grease. It is not ridiculously smothered or anything like that. It's just very shiny because it's, uh, it's spread. I put it on the side of the boss. I put it around this uh, rubber seal area here, and it has been vastly more um, stable. If I can get the camera in here, you can see the pins where everyone is talking about being bad. Um, let's see. Uh, it's not very easy to do with the on here so you can see the pins on the top I see those two pins up there I think are the cam bus pins I could be mistaken I would need to verify a schematic to verify that but supposedly those are uh, two of the pins that are uh, an issue from the door side so let me just a second put this down Okay, let's have a look in the door harness side. So again, you see the dielectric grease. Um, 
again I, I put it around the rubber seal as well because it created a very very airtight or suction tight um, stick I did not clobber it all over the connector and you know it's I mean it's very very little amount uh, overall so uh, but anyway it locked the connector in there very tight and as you can see wobbly 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 right but when you when I had this uh, seal on there it did not do all that so tell me how this design is better than the one that I just showed you on the Passat it's not by any means um, now if I'm not mistaken what I'm looking for is right here under this so I'm gonna try to stand the phone up and take that off real quick hopefully the video doesn't stop recording all right so very carefully use this uh, paint can opener I do have a small pick but this is not sharp so I'm not gonna cut open anything right, carefully walk it around all right there we go all right so here's where I'm confused okay I guess I'm not confused anymore it makes sense now all right so this tab here let me see if you can see so there's a tab here right and apparently they forgot to put the zip tie here and that's what's causing all of the issues okay um i can agree with this to an extent because it will allow a lot more movement of the wires but they are still guided in here um now the only issue with this is that it's mm, it's a slightly different design than, than what the other guy had if i'm not mistaken here uh, so I don't know how trustworthy I would be of putting a zip tie directly on the wires. Uh, let's see. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and inspect everything. I don't see any issues. Um, I would probably put some tape on there before I put straight up. Oh, you know what? I think I have some conduit. Stand by. Walking across the driveway as we go. There's my baby. We do enjoy her very much. All right, let's see. I do have some conduit here. It's only quarter inch, it's not the thickest, but I'm not going to put the zip tie straight onto the wires. I don't think that would be a good idea. And again, um, just to clarify, I am not telling you what to do with your car. I am likewise um, not voiding the warranty by protecting anything. Speaking of warranty and recall, I just, just received the the notice for this today and it was saying that uh there's no fix for the recall yet so they're gonna call us when they have a fix um let me see how wide i can get this to see if it's gonna do what i want so a quarter inch it's not quite big enough i wish i had the three eighths this might work. See if I can get it all in there. Yeah, it would have been ideal to have a heat shrink on there. Yeah, and so, I mean, this actually did work a little better than I thought it would, even though it is the quarter inch. But I'm not going to put that on there. Um, just uh, eyeball the connector for a minute, and uh, I'll be right back.
Alrighty, Let's see we're still recording here. Yep, 12 minutes in. Sorry about the time pause. Sorry I didn't have any beautiful music planned for you. I got some family coming up in the background here. So what we're going to do is take this heat shrink, okay, and I'm going to cut it roughly the distance of this harness. Right here. There we go. Now, because it's heat shrink and I don't have the uh, open side, I'm going to go ahead and cut this all the way down. My fabulous flush cut pliers. You believe these guys are 50 bucks on a tool truck? All right, so now I'm gonna very carefully glide this in here. Because what I wanna do is I wanna install the zip tie to keep the wires more stable, but at the same time, I don't want to have the zip tie directly on the, um, the wires themselves because despite it being plastic, it is a little harder material, so it possibly could cause some chafing. I'm actually gonna trim this down. I'm not gonna go the full length here. All right, so now I get that in. Get it wrapped around the wires. Okay, just to be clear, I'm not heat shrinking it. I'm not heating it. I'm just wrapping it to protect them. It's heat shrink. It's not gonna cause any damage. I am letting it tuck up in there. I'm gonna snug it around the wires. That way it um, will kind of hold it in there a little better. So I'm gonna rotate it just a hair. And again, this is not guaranteeing this is going to fix your recall or your issues or anything else. Um, but I have talked to several people and you know, before you put a zip tie, make sure it's naturally in its twisted area. So that's what I got it looking like right here. It's covered, and then so now we put the zip tie, it's not going to hit the wires. Um, so if this truly is part of the issue, then this part will be solved today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of effort in there. And you see the whole connector just pops out of place like that. What a joke. Jesus Christ. It's a stupid design. No wonder it breaks. Okay, anyway, sorry, my opinion. I like I like my Volkswagen, don't get me wrong, but this is just a really, really uh, unthoughtful design. Take your one zip tie. I'm gonna come on in here. Now, I guess depending on how you wanna route it, I mean, it does have a slot, so we'll, we'll use the slot. <clears throat> Maybe you don't know what slot I'm talking about. It's right here. So if my zip tie is not big enough, I'm just gonna wrap the whole piece. Uh, I'm sorry if it's too big, but I think it should fit though. So we'll go through there. And that's gonna boss the wire and snug it in. But you know what? Let's see, let me, let me, let me see how it looks before I do that. Let me see. Let's see. I'd rather have it holding the entire connector. Okay. Again, just to verify, I'm still protecting my wires with the heat shrink. I've got it wrapped all the way around them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lock this baby down. And I'm not putting any excessive pressure. I'm putting just enough to snug it. I can still twist just a hair if I need to. Get this stupid light out of the way, sorry. It's very difficult to do this with a headlamp on. You see I got a little bit of wiggle room. I'm gonna put like one more click on it. All right, now I take flush cuts. The reason I'm using flush cuts is because I don't want to get stabbed next time I do this. Also, it cuts it way up there instead of leaving that little um pokey on there for you to get stabbed when you when you mess with it again all right so now we'll get this baby fed up here and now the zip ties made it slightly more difficult let's use our handy dandy paint puller get this rubber back in place 
Again, you don't want to be using anything sharp because you'll stab the wires, you'll stab the uh, the rubber uh, housing here, and you want this baby to be as waterproof as possible. Oh, the zip tie really made this a pain in the ass. Excuse my language. My hands are a little greasy from all the dielectric, so that's not helping anything. Stand by. So I'll say you need a certain amount of patience to do this here. But again, we're just stretching out the rubber, so it's not really a big deal. All right. Now he's back on. Harness looks like it's in its generic place. A little rubber rotate there. Alrighty, looks good. And now we have it. Zip tie is installed. Rubber is uh, back over the connector like it's supposed to be. Um, so just to be clear on how this works, there is a pop tab here on the top. You literally pull it up. So it's up. Excuse the fam in the back. All right. Uh, I am going to apply a tad bit more uh, dielectric just right here since I took it off. I'm not going to put any more on the connector because I think that's fine. So give me one second. I'm using uh, Dow Corning for electrical insulating compound. Low volatility, moisture resistant, good thermal oxidation and chemical stability. And that's a high dielectric strength. So, But again, I'm going to apply it to uh, two P's there. But I'm applying here on this rim. I want not only to seal out water, but I want to help it from moving also. And no, this is not going to mess with the connection because it's going straight to the center. So just to be clear. All right, get this off my fingers here. All right, now we put her back in place. Right, okay, before I put it on, you see I put the little extra grease here on the edges. Okay, not the connector. It's already got enough from last time. And it was just about a pea size or so. So now, so you can watch this lock back on. It slides on, make sure it's firm. Boom. Oh look, my light came back on. So now we have power again. All right, connector seems to be stable. So it does take a little more force to move it like the other one, but I'm, it's nice and tight. Hopefully that, after that dielectric kind of sinks in, the heat gets to it a little bit, hopefully it'll uh, be real tight again. Um, I did not take anything out down here, but it is still nice and wobbly, which I don't see how that is any better, but. Let's see, does that have a lead on it too, or no? no I think that's just straight pass through wires here. I'm not feeling a, uh, a solid piece. But that's gonna conclude this video. Oh boy. Let me go in and start her up so you guys know I'm not full of crud. Push the start. Keyless error. Oh, well, here, let's let it be smart real quick. Mm. Well, we have had this for a year, and we haven't never replaced the batteries in the remote, so that may or may not be an issue. I don't know what this nonsense music is on here. Okay, we'll turn her off. Open the door. We're not here anymore. Now, if anybody has this keyless entry after doing any of this, just let me know. Uh, if anything, the computer might have found, hey, wait, why is this disconnected and we still have battery connected? Again, the battery is still connected. Um, I did not disconnect the battery for this because I wasn't doing anything contacting the pins. Uh, all I did was put a zip tie on and push the rubber back over and reapply a little bit of dielectric grease onto the outer rim of the thing. So, it's on. All right, and as you see, 
we don't have any lights so all I had to do was realize that everything's fine alrighty and again you see there the 19,468 miles and I'll upload this video but I'll keep you all up to date and uh, so far we've had no issues so I uh, appreciate you guys for watching uh, hopefully this helps out and clarifies a few things. Uh, shout out to Phil from the Facebook page for uh, mentioning the zip tie situation. Uh, again, like I said in the other video, there was a lot of people saying that it was just um, um, wires chafing due to micro movements and all that good stuff. But we'll see what happens. I haven't had any issues since I did the dielectric grease the first time in the last video. I uploaded it the same day, so it's been that amount of time. Uh, and if anything changes, uh, I will be sure to post and let you guys know. Hopefully this helps somebody. Again, if you don't know how to do this, you're not comfortable, you don't have proper dielectric grease, um, please get a mechanic who knows what he's doing so he doesn't mess your car up or just let the dealer deal with it, whatever the case. Um, I highly doubt they can say you voided any sort of warranty by putting a little grease on and applying a zip tie that they didn't install in the first place. Now if you use a metal zip tie or if you don't protect the wires and your zip tie rubs into them and chafes them, then of course, yeah, they could probably try to figure out somehow to, to say that you are the one that caused the issue, whatever it may be. Uh, but being that it's a known recall and they're not providing any fix in any kind of responsible amount of time because it's absurd that you have engineers who build cars for a living and design them, et cetera, et cetera, and they can't come up with a problem to fix some wires on a, a boss collector. So anybody making excuses for them can suck a fat one. Uh, excuse my language, but I'm sorry, it's just pathetic. All right, uh, you don't have you know, an issue that's causing 275,000 or whatever vehicles to have this issue uh, year over year. Uh, and apparently there was a issue with the golfs way back when uh, I believe one of the one of the hatchback cars had a door harness problem too. Uh, now this could just be because of COVID. Maybe they weren't, uh, you know, um, maybe the, the people weren't working, or maybe they didn't want to work, or maybe they were under pressure so much they forgot what they're doing. Blah 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 blah. Many 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 variables that could have gone into why this happened the way it did. The problem is it's a safety issue. And if your airbag doesn't deploy properly and you got hit in the side and you die, guess what happens? Oh, well, right? Oh, well, just don't drive the car then. Well, yeah, but they're not compensating you $400, $500, $600 a month for the car that you just bought. So all you say in that also can go suck a fat one. All right? Um, a fat lollipop, just for the record. Anyway, um, yeah, so if you want to do this, I just showed you how. Uh, if you have uh, an electrician uh, with automotive or an electronics uh, specialist for automotive that is very familiar with all the wire sets, CAN bus, etc., all the electrical uh, precautions needed to be taken so they don't short anything out and all that good stuff, um, you know, feel free to, you know, have them, you know, take care of it for you. Otherwise, take it to a, a dealership or a shop. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, regardless of being a dealership or a, an automotive shop on the side or shade tree, whatever you people want to call it. Um, I've worked at a dealership and I worked with some shoddy mechanics. Okay. I worked at a Toyota dealership and there was some great guys there and there were some not great guys there. Um, I worked at plenty of aftermarket shops, coffin tire, which is now Mavis, um, auto quick was independent owned. And there's a lot of variable mechanics out there that some know what they're doing by trade. Some are just smart and some have zero idea what they're doing. So don't think just because you go to a dealership that they're going to be the smartest guys in the room, so to speak, because they're not, okay? Not all the time anyway. Uh, the only advantage that they have is if they have all the specific Volkswagen uh, computer diagnostic equipment, not just OBD code readers and all that good stuff, but specific Vol uh, Volkswagen diagnostic stuff. Like with Toyota, we use what we call TechStream, and we could go into the car and manipulate all kinds of things, change the how the windows roll down, the doors open, which door unlocks when you walk up to the car, et cetera, et cetera for newer cars. Um, but anyway, just keep those things in mind, right? Um, if you don't want to do it, you're not comfortable with it, you don't want to void your warranty or, or whatever, you know, reason that you have, that's fine. Don't do it, you know? But I just know in my heart of hearts that I took precaution that when I or my wife drives this car with the kids, that there is at least something done to possibly prevent a catastrophic event or a random error, and then we die or get hit by someone that's not paying attention and then we get hurt because of a Volkswagen, okay? Because their engineers or, or whoever is in charge 
We live in a crazy time now. It's 2022. We don't know who's calling the shots. All this shortage nonsense and blah, blah, blah. You can't tell me that in the United States of America, we don't have the, the means to make a freaking connector or fix some wires, okay? If you said that out loud, think about how absurd that sounds, okay? I know we get a lot of stuff from China and Taiwan and Vietnam and, and Russia and Ukraine and all these other places, right? And Germany, whatever, whatever. Switzerland, etc. But don't think that we do not have the capability to fix a wire harness in America, okay? Volkswagen is worldwide. It's not just in the United States. It's not just in Germany, et cetera, et cetera. So before you say foolish comments like that, think out, say it out loud to yourself and see if it still sounds the same as what you thought it did. Um, but anyway, any, any backflash on this, feel free, comment away. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I've been doing automotive for like 17 years now on the side uh, and also professionally. I am ASC certified. Uh, they have since expired because I don't do automotive anymore. Um, but anyways, hopefully this helps somebody. Cheers. Have a good day. Um, and I hope this works for everyone. Or at least Volkswagen can give a solid uh, reason, you know, or, or, or a solution temporarily or something like that. But thanks again. Bye-bye.